President Cloyd and the Board of Trustees, and the administration, faculty, staff, and alumni uh, of Drury University, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, to the military veterans, active duty, military families that are here, I want to thank you for your service. Please join me in a round of applause for them. On behalf of my mother, who four days ago turned 98 and will hope will be joining us very soon, and other family members that have traveled to Springfield that will also be joining us very soon, oh, they're here. <laughs> we thank you. We're humbled and, uh, about, for this posthumous recognition of our patriarch, Reverend Oliver Leon Brown. Um, anytime you deliver a commencement address, you know you need to be brief. So to the graduating class, of 2019, if you equate life to a book, you are about to write your next chapter. Your hard work has been rewarded, and yes, even your Google research has been rewarded. <laughs> so congratulations. For you, I promise to be brief, because I know that it is likely that there are more than a few graduation parties planned for later today. And some of you might even be planning vacations, and I want you to consider that exotic destination, the state of Kansas. <laughs> Our home state. Yes, we realize that we're flyover country, but Kansas historically has been very significant to the nation, as has the history of Missouri. When my parents, sisters, and I moved to Springfield for Dad's assignment to Pastor Benton Avenue AME Church, we lived across the street from Drury University. We attended Springfield Public Schools. My oldest sister, Linda, attended Central High School. I imagine there are some Central High folks in the room. My middle sister, Terry, attended Eastwood Junior High School. And at eight years old, I remember walking across your campus, which was the shortest route to Boyd Elementary. Now, at eight years old, the idea of being in this role today would have been beyond comprehension, which to me illustrates that we can seldom with certainty know what path life will take, what experiences you'll have, what contributions you'll make to your community and beyond. So standing before you today is an immense and unimagined honor to be here at Drury University and to be part of this commencement ceremony for the class of 2019, who would have thought it? The one thing I remember walking across your campus as an eight-year-old was I was just in awe of the size of the buildings. But I was also especially interested in the snowmen that the students would build. Now, very creative, sometimes um, interesting in their dimensions. But as an eight-year-old, it was a source of fascination, and I began to wonder, what goes on here? You know, because I couldn't possibly know as an eight-year-old. Well, this ceremony today includes a conferring of a posthumous degree on my late father. An honorary doctorate is an esteemed recognition of a body of work, and also an understanding that we all leave a legacy. Everyone in this room, regardless of your chosen profession or what you do in life, the fact that we have lived, we all live, leave a legacy. It just so happens that my father's legacy is an integral part of United States history and constitutional interpretation. The Brown versus Board of Education at its core defines our sovereign power as citizens and clarifies that our rights are not to be arbitrarily restricted by anyone. My parents were ordinary people in the midst of something extraordinary. But my father, on behalf of our family and our community, took a stand for social change by joining the NAACP campaign to make real the ideal of core constitutional principles of fairness and justice. When we compromise those principles, we fracture our communities and we challenge our ability to live harmoniously appreciating and respecting diverse perspectives. Brown v. Board of Education struck a blow against racial segregation. And under the leadership of Thurgood Marshall and a formidable group of attorneys, they used the rule of law to mend 
the fracture that segregated people based on their race. Well, here she is. <laughs> Thank you. Children of color were disenfranchised in our public schools, and so the, the purpose of Brown v. Board was to make real the promise of the United States Constitution and the 14th Amendment. So 65 years ago, on May 17, 1954, the landmark United States Supreme Court ruling in Brown laid a legal foundation that benefits everyone in this room, not simply people of color. You see, during the Brown era, our nation was in the midst of a Cold War. And we always do things thinking perhaps the world is not watching. Let me assure you, the world is watching. So when it became known with President Truman here in Missouri that communist leading countries were starting to focus on the human rights abuses going on in our country with respect to people of color, it was time for us to make the change. It was time for us to make real the promise of the Constitution. So Brown v. Board helped move the narrative, if you will, helped turn the dial, helped correct the course of history with respect to the promises of fairness and justice. 65 years ago, on May 17, 1954, the landmark ruling helped all of us recognize that we have sovereignty as United States citizens. Being a United States citizen is not a spectator sport, let me remind you. We all need to be very engaged, very actively engaged, to move our country forward. See, the case set legal precedent that protects the rights of women, the disabled, the LBGTQ community, people with special needs. It helped outlaw age discrimination. That's what made Brown v. Board of Education so important for everyone in this room. Because until then, our Supreme Court had not interpreted the 14th Amendment and what it meant for us as citizens until Brown v. Board of Education. Brown v. Board of Education became the catalyst for my father's civil rights activism here in Springfield, Missouri that as a 10-year-old I wasn't aware of until recent years. See, these were people of courage. So my message today is to have the courage to hope. Hope is something everybody has a right to have. Have the courage to live in gratitude. Have the courage to help those in need. And as citizens of this and other great nations, have the courage to show up Stand up and speak up whenever and wherever you encounter injustice. Inside each of us is a courageous person. And for the graduates today, your education here at Drury University is the first step on the path to the courage I know you will exhibit as you realize who you are. Identity formation is ongoing. You know, you'll change and shift and make decisions. People say most of us have at minimum, not to scare you, 11 careers between the start and retirement. So be prepared, be courageous, be bold, be fearless, and most of all, be the kind of citizen that will make this a more perfect union. I applaud you, I thank you for this honor, and I encourage you all to enjoy the celebrations of this evening. Thank you.